Quinn Rampage Jack. Drops him. This is Frankie the Answer Edgar. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Hello, everybody. Welcome back inside the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and J- J- Jay Haran. I bet you thought I was going to say Joey. No, Jay Haran's here with us today, plus Heidi Fang, and we have a great Friday show lined up for you, man, to get ready for a weekend of fights and UFC news. UFC welterweight Johnny Hendricks is going to be joining us in just a little bit, as well as UFC fighter Cub Swanson coming off his win last Saturday. But first, let's start with some UFC cuts. And if see, and let's see if this plays into the UFC fight card at all. Um, could some of these fights that are happening tomorrow be a showcase for some of the cuts that may still come within the next few days? Yeah, we, we heard um, just yesterday during the scrums at the press conference that uh, we're not done by a long shot. UFC's cutting 100 fighters still. Uh, and, I mean, when you bring up tomorrow's card, there's there's quite a few fighters on the card coming off with, you know, two straight losses. Um, you also got the shocker that he said uh, if Uriah Faber doesn't win his fight against Ivan Menjivar tomorrow, that he'll get cut. Like, wow. dude, Uriah Faber, he, <laughs> his last fight was for the interim title. He just coached the Ultimate Fighter live, their first time ever going live, trying that experiment. And he may get cut if he doesn't win uh, against a very tough opponent in Ivan Menjivar. You know, a veteran of the sport. He's been around longer than... Rough, uh, rough business inside yeah. and outside the cage. <laughs> it's insane. I it, mean, for me personally, uh, you know, no organization. I go, I could speak for myself. No organization has built me. I fought um, every organization. I built my own name. Um, my career is speaks for itself, so I mean, for me, I take it, you know, okay, it's another drop in a bucket, let's move forward. But other guys, you know, um, um, like a guy like Fitch fought 17, 18 fights for them, fought for the title for them, I mean, he might be taking a little different from me, you know, so, you know, it's uh, it's just part of the business, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a business to it, and, you know, um, you know, us as fighters, you know, this is the stuff we got to go through that people don't, that they don't understand. You know, every time we step in there, not only, you know, our bodies on the line, our jobs are on the line, and, you know, you got to be really mentally tough to do this. Ab- absolutely. And bring up Fitch. That was, that was, I think, one of the biggest shocks. And I think John Fitch tr- was trending all day on Twitter. People were outraged over this. You, like you say, had a title shot, 14-3 and three in the UFC. All right. Yes, uh, you know, we were talking about it before we went on the air. In his last four fights, he's got one win, two losses, and a draw. But his draw to BJ Penn, you know, a, a future UFC Hall of Famer. He, he, he big brothered Eric Silva. Mm-hmm. Big brothered him. I mean, bullied him. And Silva was this, yeah. you know, prospect out of Brazil that you couldn't speak high enough about. And his, uh, and his losses, Damian Maia, a guy who eats black belts for breakfast. I mean, this dude is one of the greatest jiu-jitsu practitioners in the world, and he's added wrestling to his game, all right, dropping down to 170 to take, you know, now he's a welterweight taken on Fitch. He was bigger, stronger, right? It was yeah. just what was going to happen. Yeah, and- I, mean, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, this is uh, the cards we're all dealt, you know, and it's how you, you know, go about the next step and next chapter and whatever, next fight, next organization. You know, you got to keep moving forward. It's like life, you know, <clears> it knocks you down, you get back up, you move. And, and and we're not talking huge losing streaks. I mean, Jay just came back into the UFC, fought Jake Ellenberga, okay? Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Some, people, some people say you won that fight. Yeah. You come back in, okay, all right. We all know what happened with Ty Run yeah, just recently. Yeah, I got caught lucky punch. You know, I'm not lucky. He trained for it, but he hit me in, uh, behind the ear. You know, it happens. That's the game we play. You know, I'm not even upset about uh, uh, that. I got caught, so... You know, again, for me, I can speak for myself. I'm okay. You know, uh, I'm going to move forward. You know, again, no organization has really, you know, built me. I've always done what I felt was best for me. I might not have always made the right decisions. 
but um, I did what I felt was right for me. And, you know, again, I know how to deal with this situation probably better than others because I fought so many different places and, you know, my whole career has been on the road. You You're know? a nomad. <laughs> nomad Haran, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, but th we're Ronin, not talking. baby, Ronan. <laughs> that's, it, that's it. And we're not talking, you know, long losing streaks. I mean, it was two fights. Um, so it's so critical to get into the UFC and win right now. And then you see a cut like Fitch. You just have to sit there and shake your head. Well, you do have to wonder. Um, you have to wonder about the fact that uh, maybe fan point of view, stylistically, Fitch isn't the most exciting fighter to watch, but he does what he has to do. He goes in there and wins. You know, I've always said it's a catch-22 if you don't like wrestling, if you don't like dealing with wrestlers, do yourself a favor. I thought he had a great fight against Eric Silva, and That's this is one fight ago, so yeah, I mean... Yeah, exactly. It was the fight know. of the night. Yeah, exactly. So, and when was the last time Fitch was involved with fight of the night? And then yeah. after, and then coming off of... And if you look at the fight with Damian Maya, mm -hmm. um, it was a grappling chess match. Yeah. If you know the sport of jiu-jitsu and wrestling and just the grappling arts, it was a thing of beauty to watch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so to... The common fan, it might not be that entertaining. I wonder how much pressure has been put on the UFC by Fox TV that they need to be putting on exciting fights. We want to see the knockouts. We want to see the submissions. I mean, you look at other organizations ar ar around the world, uh -huh. you see so many fights end with finishes. In the UFC, it's a different story. When you're the, it's the, it's the, the best of the best. When you're at that elite level, you're going to have guys that are evenly matched, and you're going to have a lot of decisions. I think 80% of UFC fights end in a decision. That's because of great matchmaking by Joe Silva, putting guys that are evenly matched up against each other. It's just the nature of the game. Right, exactly. Um, out of, you know, we talk about getting cut and exciting fight cards. I, this is how crazy it's getting. Is this true, Heidi, that I even heard that if Leota Machida loses... That he he is possibly facing being cut. Ah, uh, I don't know. Or do you think that's a long stretch? I, I, I heard I, a rumor somewhere. I mean, you you never know. Mm -hmm. You never know. I mean, uh, when no one thought Fitch would get cut. Uh, did uh, seriously when everyone woke up on Wednesday morning? Did people think that he would get cut? Did anyone what you know expect to walk away from the UFC press conference yesterday, expecting to hear Dana White say Uriah Faber's job is in jeopardy? It's a it's a different game right now, and I, that's why I'm wondering. I wonder how much Fox executives have a say in this, you know, or a suggestion making. I, I it's it's uh, interesting. Yeah, that's the business, you know. Um, us as fighters, you know, even you, you put that pressure on yourself, you start thinking about getting cut. It's gonna show in your performance. So I mean, you know, my advice to fighters is, you know, do what you do and. Stay in the moment, and you know whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen regardless. You know, you just—that's what we do. We fight for our life. We fight in the cage. We get out and get a fight for our jobs too. That's what comes with it. So I mean, you know, build yourself, build yourself a fan base, and you know, if you have some fans, they'll follow you wherever you go. Do you think that this could possibly affect some of the fighters and the fights in the future, like getting into their heads? Like in yeah, other words, J J J you know, Jay just kind no of put about it. Yeah. You know, especially fighting for the you know the top of the top of the UFC. You know that that all comes with that the pressure. You know the worrying about um, the losing. I'm I'm out. I don't have a job. You know all that. But again, you got to have a mind frame where, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, blank blanket. Yeah, Pretty you, much. you're exactly right. It is what it is. This yeah. is it's a sport, okay, mm -hmm. but it's also a form of entertainment. Exactly. And you need to go out there and you need to be entertaining. Yeah. Do you remember? I think. Wait, let's talk about um, Leonard Garcia. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have many wins in the UFC, but his job. Dana White has said, you know, it, he'll never get cut because he goes out there, he throws caution to the wind, doesn't care if he gets knocked out or submitted. He just goes balls to the wall, full fury, a hundred and ten percent, and that's to to people that's entertaining. Yeah, I mean that's his style. So, you know, do it. Do it works for you. Absolutely. You know, you know? he yeah. he doesn't care about a win or a loss. Yeah. A and you know that's. I'm not saying that's the right way to go in there. Not at all. But yeah, I mean, it, everybody has a different style. Exactly. Um, so if that's working for you, do what you do. How yeah. about how about Brendan Schaub fight if he loses tomorrow? He's another one. I'll tell you, that's a real interesting fight. I want to see. That's a fight that. You got a question. I wonder how much that's playing in his head going into this fight. You know, coming off of two losses in a row, uh, big uh, big fight for him yeah, tomorrow. The best thing you could do is not worry about that. Yeah, but well, the thing is, is Brent. He's a thing. very he's a very uh, he's heavy handed. Mm -hmm. He's a good he's got good wrestling. Okay, 
but he likes to sit there and try to prove himself. And against a guy like LeVar Johnson, you don't want to do that. Yeah, well. You know, I would just just be smart. <laughs> go in there, take him down. That don't, that don't always work. <laughs> I know, I know. Just be smart stuff, about it. Go in there, take him down. from uh, a second to second. A in second there, to so, second. I, mean. I know, right? <laughs> Crazy. Well, as I told you at the top of the hour, joining us on the line right now is UFC welterweight Johnny Hendricks. Hendricks was expected to face Jake Ellenberger and now will be facing Carlos Condit on March 16th, 2013 at UFC 158. However, um, you there, John? Yes, sir. How y'all doing today? What's going on, brother? Johnny, what's uh, up, man? What's happening, man? Hey, John, it seems it seems like you may be getting what you've been waiting for. Uh, I mean, do you think maybe at this point it's finally safe to say that if you get past Condit, you'll finally get the title shot you deserve? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's uh, that's one thing. As soon as I found out fighting Condit, that's exactly what I thought. You know what I mean? I was like, all right. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know I, I always wanted to earn my spot, and uh, you know, now I get to prove it again. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, Comet, he's a tough fighter. You know, he's uh, he's been around a long time. I've watched him for a long time. And, you know, I'm excited to get the basics. Yeah, Billy brings up an excellent point. Um, you know, is this what's going to get you that title shot? Johnny, we've been down this road before, I think, three different times where you've been told that you're going to get the title shot. Um, and now that you're facing Carlos, guy who was going, who was the interim champion, just coming off of a loss to the champion, how did this play out? Did you, did you call up Joe Silva and ask for this, or did they suggest it to you? No, uh, my my management team and uh, my coaches did it for me. You know, uh, and they knew that I would want this fight. Uh, you know. Um, your own, you know, you're you're promised everything, but you know, man, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta go out there and earn it yourself. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to do is uh, just keep earning it, and sooner or later, man, you know, good Lord willing, it's gonna happen. Uh, and you know, I was just as shocked as everybody else was when I found out the news. But uh, you know, now that I've it's sank in, man, I'm really excited. You know, like I said, he's a tough guy. Um, it should be a fun fight for the fans. Uh, what do? You, what if anything do you have to change up in your training uh, with with a, a different? Because it's a totally different type of, of fighter. Uh, Ellenberger, you know, has the good wrestling, likes to stand and trade like you. You know, has the power in the hands. Carlos, stylistically, he's more. He's got better technique. Uh, you know, a better stand up fighter. Uh, how how do you make changes? Oh, that you said. You know, right there is that, you know, uh, Jake Allenberger, he has a mean left hook. Uh, and Carlos Condit, man, he, he, we saw it against GSP, is that you really don't know when when he's done throwing or when he wants to start. You know, um, he's he, at any position, he'll he'll throw something. Um, and that right there is pretty pretty dangerous in itself. Um, also, you know, if you do want to take him down, you got to worry about his ground game. You know, so just because you're winning at one area doesn't mean that you can win at the other. But, um, you know, what you try to do is you try to strategize how to get to certain positions to benefit yourself. Um, and where, you know, where if we took down Jake Ellenberger, we knew his, uh, the ground game off his back <laughs> isn't like Carlos Condes. So, you know, we weren't, we weren't doing a lot of stuff uh, to defend, uh, you know what I mean? having to defend a lot of things off his back. So that's really changed a lot, too. It's, you know, uh, preparing for, you know, he's got nasty camoras, he's got good triangles, and he's got nasty uh, arm bars. So, uh, you know, pretty much changed every bit of my training. But that's what makes it exciting, you know, fun. You know, you, you, you sort of get into a, a trend, you know, and you sit there and go every day, train every day. But now, you know, whenever you're getting a fight like this, it uh, Yeah, and I think it's actually, you know, you got enough time. It's a month. And, and I like what you said there, how it changes up going to the gym. Now you're, it's not like you're in that, that same routine every day. You're Now you're switching things up. Uh, I heard, hey, Johnny, I heard you down in Arizona training. How's that going? Uh, I actually leave uh, Monday. I'll be there for uh, a week, <laughs> and I'm pretty excited. You know, uh, I don't know what their gym's called, but... Uh, I'm pretty excited to get Power down there. Power MMA uh, Fitness. 
Uh, oh, okay. so you're, you're going down to train with Bader and Dalloway and those guys? Simpson. Yes. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, just because of, you know, his short notice, you know, a lot of guys have fights coming up, so it was hard to get them to come here. You know, they don't know us. Uh, some people, you know, people don't know how we are. But so we're like, all right, let's step out of the box. Why don't we travel somewhere? We still get to come back and have a week of good training here. You know, and get everything out of the system, and then that's before I travel to uh, Canada. Hmm. Yeah, I was supposed to get with you a few times, man. We were always on different schedules. I had a fight coming up, or you know, you had your fight coming up, but you know, hopefully in the future. And you guys were together at a Couture for a little bit back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, got some yeah. good, uh, good work in. Jay Hunt, Johnny Hendricks, <laughs> like a family reunion right yeah. now, huh? There you go. Now, yesterday, or it might have been the day before, uh, Jake Ellenberger kind of throwing shots at you, saying that you didn't want to fight him and you were afraid of that fight. That's why you jumped at, at the Condit uh, offer. Uh, that's not at all true, is it? No. <laughs> why? Okay, here's, here's the difference. You know, uh, Condit beat Jake. I know it was earlier in his career, but he still did. Uh, and, you know, I've also, you know, who would you rather fight, the guy that's ranked number three or the guy that's ranked number six? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'll, if you really wanted to pick, which one would you rather fight? You want to take this, you know, the guy that has a, uh, that's higher up the chain, right? So my, my philosophy is, and like I said, I didn't have any uh, say in the fight at all. <clears throat> I found out from... A friend, they called me up and they're like, "Hey, you fighting Carlos Condit?" And I said, <laughs> "No, I'm fighting Jake Ellenberger." And he's like, "That's not what I heard." And I said, "No, I'm fighting Jake Ellenberger." And they're like, "Did you know that uh, oh, Bruno McDonald got hurt?" And I said, "No." He said, "You didn't hear any of this." I said, "No." I said, "Let me call my manager. I'll call you back." So I got on the phone. Uh, I was sitting there, and my wife was like, "What?" I was like, "I guess I'm fighting Carlos Condit." That's what the word on the street is, anyways. And I, he called me up. My manager called me up and says, I got some news for you. And I said, I'm fighting Carlos Connie. He said, how'd you know? You know, and that's how I found out. I, I had no idea, you know. Um, and that's the way I like it. I don't like uh, picking my fights. You know what I mean? I don't like uh, doing any of that. That's why I have a manager, and that's why I, uh, <clears throat> you know, and my coaches, that's my coach's job and my manager's job. That's it. But you brought up a very interesting point in saying who was ranked higher. And, yes, Carlos in the UFC rankings is ranked higher than Ellenberger. Okay. But you're ranked number two. Okay. Or number one, actually, behind the champion in the rankings. What are your thoughts on this new ranking system? Uh, well, you know, I, I like it if they follow it. You know what I mean? Uh I think that's good, is because you need a ranking system, you know, uh, you really do, uh, or uh, stuff like this will happen, you know what I mean, where you never get it, you know, you just keep being sort of a gatekeeper, you know what I'm saying, um, and with the ranking system, now we can say, all right, well, <laughs> this guy's ranked number one in everybody's mind, so he gets to face the champion, you know what I'm saying, and, and that's sort of what needs to needs to be done is just follow that to the T and you know and, and, and it's a good thing too because now you know you can sit there and you can you have something to strive for you know what I'm saying uh, and I remember whenever I first started, you know I was like man I can't wait to fight some of these guys to get in there you know to see what you have and all this other kind of stuff and you know finally you're there and you know it's just I don't know I, I like the I like the competition uh, you know, it's funny. He he talks about – with the ranking system aside for a second, I'm kind of actually surprised that Jake Ellenberger would make a statement like that, to be honest. But if you had to say, you know, just off the top of your head, without the ranking system, who do you feel is a more dangerous opponent? Or are they evenly matched, Jake Ellenberger or Carlos Condit? Well, you know, Jake Ellenberger, he does pose a threat with being knocked out, right? But – I've also been in the Osteon with one of the heaviest handed guys in 170 class is Josh Koschek. I got hit with everything he threw at me. I was still able to come victorious. 
You know what I'm saying? So I know that's not the threat. But with Carlos Condit, not only do you have the threat of him throwing those crazy kicks, back fists, all these other things, if you take Jake Ellenberger down, you know, he's not he's not the greatest on his back. Where Carlos Condit, if you take him down, you still have to worry about all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, and we saw it with uh, GSP, who is a very good passer, and he's very good at controlling side control. He couldn't do that with Carlos Condit. Um, so, with that being said, I think Condit is the tougher fight, and the reason why that is because he was the intern champ. He just got done facing GSP. You know, who better to try to get a win against than the guy who just had a great year? Uh, good point. And, and you're absolutely right. You know, when you talk about a guy like Carlos Condit, he's so dangerous everywhere. You you, you got to be on your uh, you got to be aware and on your guard at all times. Um, one last question for me. I just I just want to know what your thoughts are on the fact that Diaz is fighting GSP. Uh, man, <clears throat> it sucks. <laughs> you know, it does. Uh, it, in my opinion, I think I should be in there. But uh, everything happens for a reason. You know, uh, I was definitely pissed when I first learned about it. <clears throat> but now that I've had time to think about it, it's been like this this training camp, we're training like it's a five-round fight again. Um, so it gives me two fights, you know, uh, to train like that. Um, and there's some things that we've changed from our last fight to this fight. Uh, because we're like, man, that five rounds, that's, you know, that's a little tougher. You know, here's how we can make it a little bit better and make our uh, training a little bit smarter. So that's where I'm going with right now. And, you know, like I said, it does suck. But, you know, turn into a positive. All right. All right, right. Well, I'll tell you what, Johnny. I'm, I am i don't know about everybody else out there, but I'm sure everybody will agree with me. I am stoked about this fight, and I think this is your calling card right here, man. You get past Condit, I think it's safe to say you will be fighting GSP. That would be your next fight. And not only that, best possible you know scenario right here is it's the same night. It's the fight right before GSP and Nick Diaz. Both you guys will be ready, having same fight fought in the same night. You'll be ready the same time, ready to go. I'm excited for it. It's a night of welterweights. And and a guy you could have called for advice on fighting either one of those guys, Jake Ellenberg or GSP, right here, Jay Haran. <laughs> you give him a private phone call, you guys can talk about the fight together and what it's like to face a guy like GSP, get you in that mindset. So... Uh, uh, all he, the he has a, Johnny has a mean left hand. If it lands, oh, if it you know, lands, it's that, be, <laughs> that's it. It's, it's devastating. Early night. It could be an early night. I spoke to Johnny once at a Boys Town <laughs> thing, which I think, by the way, that the fact that you do that is is just totally awesome doing for the kids. Johnny's a great guy. Yeah, but I remember speaking to you and you telling me. Yeah, I, I've learned to only hit with 85% power, uh, you know. <laughs> they don't need my 100%. I don't want to kill somebody. Wait, I'm going to start <laughs> calling you Johnny Drago. <laughs> well, you, well, the reason why is because I haven't done this sport for too long. So whenever I throw full power, my hands break. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and so what I've learned is right now I, 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 I spar with 20 to 22 ounce uh, winning. And I have some gloves actually made that are 22s by Everlast. Um, you know, that's what I spar with. Um, so that way I can protect my hands. I, and I can throw hard um, in sparring. And I can also protect my partners. <laughs> uh, and protect but, your partners. Exactly. Yeah, that, Johnny, that's the most important thing. I never heard somebody that this applies to more than you. Whatever he hits, it destroys. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, Johnny, man, we're going to wish you all the best. We want to see you back here inside the MMA Fight Corner. And, uh, listen, all the best. Come back with a W, my friend. And nobody deserves hey. it more than you. Hey, thank luck. you, guys. Y'all have a wonderful evening, all right? Good all right, luck. you have too, fun, man. Here, we'll you too, Johnny. To you all right, you too, right. Johnny. All right, I have to tell you about an amazing experience I had right here in Las Vegas. I recently had the LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes better wow. than 2020. That's right, Jay, and I keep telling time. Jay, you got to go down there and speak to Dr. Rothman. I don't need glasses anymore, and I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely professional. I urge anyone who has thought about LASIK to speak with my doctor, 
Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK. When you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available, call 702-636-2010. The number again is 702-636-2010. You're going to be glad you did. I know I was. I know I'm going to get Jay over there, and he's going to have the same exact story. When we come back, Yippee. Cub Swanson and all of our friends join us, so don't go anywhere. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Time for Jay Moore Sports. Absolutely. Jay Moore Sports. Yeah. Dr. Buss had been dead four hours. Here's what TJ Simers had to say. It was LA. He, he understood Hollywood better than maybe any other sports owner, not to mention the, the young escorts that were with him a lot. That's terrific. Guy's been dead four hours, and you're on the radio going, not to mention all the escorts he hung out with. I'm sure Jeannie and Jimmy Buss. Guys, we start making fun of the fact that he's always surrounded by escorts. Jay Moore Sports. I'm fired up. Jay Moore Sports. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Radio 920. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, Shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. When Americans volunteer to serve their country. Their country promises to take care of them when they come home. Carlos Leon, in the spinal cord injury unit. Veterans who suffer a paralyzing injury are injured for life. 21 years old, injured May 10, 2005. Health care, transportation, simple day-to-day -day living become major challenges and require enormous assistance. We filed a 21-2680, and has that been processed? Having to deal with a complicated and often confusing process is not easy. I can send you another copy. Paralyzed Veterans of America has been fighting for over 60 years to make sure paralyzed veterans get all the benefits they were promised from the country they proudly serve. A spinal cord injury is an injury for life. And at Paralyzed Veterans, we are their partners for life. To help us help America's veterans, visit pva.org. Thank you. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You're here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Jay Haran, Heidi Fang, and Armando behind the board. And uh, real quick, we have Cub Swanson, who's going to be joining us shortly. But before that, I told you, this is why Las Vegas is one of the greatest places to do this show. It's the mecca for MMA. We have so many great relationships here, and I told you there's some 
great organizations, local organizations here in Vegas to go check out if you want to see great fights. And on the line right now, I have Jeff Meyer from Tough Enough. Jeff, you there? Hey, Billy. Hi. How you doing? What's going on, brother? Listen, real quick, tell us what's going on, what's happening next week, and uh, you may give us some tickets. That's what I'm really interested in. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, invite everybody that's listening to please come to the Tough Enough Festa Brawl. Uh, next Friday, March 1st, at the South Point Arena. Doors open at 5.30. The first bite's at 7. Tickets start at 25 bucks. Um, but, yes, I'd love to drop some off in case anybody listening might want to call in and try to win them. Um, so I'd be happy to. I do live right down the street from you guys. All right, Jeff, tell me, tell me how many pairs you're going to give us. Uh, well, how many do you want? Don't go crazy on me, but I don't know, maybe like uh, – Four or five pairs? All like right, that. five pairs. Five pairs of tickets. Five pairs of okay. tickets for five lucky winners. I call in right now, 702-365-9200. 702-365-9200. We have five pairs. If you are the first five callers that call in, we give them to you. Jeff, thanks so much for calling in. Uh, thanks I, so I, much for I, having I, me. Hey, anything you want to plug about the fight? A fight to look out for next enough, Friday? Tough, tough enough. enough. Always, a, always a great card. Got great fighters in there. For anybody that doesn't know, this is where Ronda Rousey got her start. Look there where you she go. is now. All right. Always check out the fights. They're always entertaining. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks again so much for having me on, guys, and I hope to see you next Friday at the South Point. All right, Jeff. We'll be there with bells on or with gloves. Uh, awesome. Either one. <laughs> call in, guys. Anybody listening, call in now. That's it. 702-365-9200. Um, wow. You know, you're right. Ronda Rousey. That's yeah, the, and, and we'll get to that in a second, but, you know, we're going to have uh, Cub on in a minute. Uh, but, yeah, dude, I mean, Tough Enough's been getting a lot of publicity this last few weeks, uh, you know, showing UFC primetime, the countdown special. Uh, she was on uh, Real Sports with Brian Gumble. They did a thing, you know. They've been all ESPN. I'll be honest, I'm a little rousied out. <laughs> a little. I never have uh, too much Ronda Rousey. Yeah, I know. Uh, that is a, my girl. And do not make the stupid statement that I have a shrine because Joey always no, says I have a shrine. It, There's no shrine to it, Ronda. It has nothing to do with a, a shrine to Ronda. The one thing that just there, – there's – there's that thin line between, you know, a fan and a stalker, and I'm just oh, you're teetering on it, so I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. Not for you, for her. But, uh, you know, I, I may be rounded out, but this is tomorrow night. It is an historic event, uh, you know, first time ever. Two women headlining, uh, uh, you know, not even headlining, just being in the UFC. And, and not only that, this is the first time, I think, in UFC history you have two people who have never even stepped in the octagon before. As the main event. How amazing is that? And how much pressure, you know, talking about being rousied out, how much pressure is on Ronda to win this fight? It's I mean, a, Liz, Liz Carmouche said it perfectly. All the pressure's on her. It's not on her, uh, on Liz at all. Abs absolutely. You know, you got to, and you got to wonder how much dealing with this media and the attention, especially when you have Dana saying that, you know, the publicity that she's been bringing to the UFC and to the sport of mixed martial arts blows what Brock Lesnar did out of the water is that true? I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow night or I guess Monday when ratings and, you know, buys and tickets come in. But from what I saw from the weigh-ins, that was a packed house. I mean, I haven't seen a house like that packed since uh, the July card here with Anderson Silva and uh, Chael Sonnen. What do you think, Jay? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a business and it's uh, entertainment and um – you know, she could fight, too, so, you know, it's a win-win Have you ever win, seen, win situation. did you see Ronda when she was amateur at all, around at all, or you never caught her in I her saw amateur her fight in Strikeforce. I didn't see her amateur fights. Well, but I, uh, I heard about her from Manny. I'm friends with Manny and Cairo, and they told me about her back in the day, how sick her judo was and her arm bars and stuff like that. So I've been, I've heard about her a long time ago. The scary thing about Ronda Rousey is that every opponent has knows exactly, yeah. exactly what's coming. But like the girl said, the other girl, uh, Liz, you know, her mind frame is definitely where it should be with, you know, pressures on, on Ronda, you know, just go out there and does, do what she does, fight and not worry about it. You know, that's the best way she could have a great night, you know. And, um, again, Ronda's a tough girl. You know, she, 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 you know, she gets that arm. You know, it uh, could be uh, early night. Uh, absolutely. And when she – has that arm she don't let go of that arm it gets it gets ugly yeah, she's mean when she gets that arm <laughs> ain't nothing but a chicken wing and and me and philip talked about this a million times like a lot of people know like a lot of fighters you walk in it's like what's that other fighter um who's who used to get everybody in that in the headlock um whatever you know it's coming 
and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, McKenzie. Co- uh, right, right. Uh, Cody McKenzie. Cody, Cody McKenzie, yeah, McKenzie yeah. who yeah. knows Ronda, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kind of ironic that both of them have signature moves, but Cody is not the fighter, unfortunately, that Ronda is. Okay, man, we're, we're holding up dinner, man. Come on, let's go. <laughs> we're holding up dinner on what? <laughs> Cub. Is Cub on the phone? Cub is Cub's on ready. the phone, yes. man. Yes. Hey, man. Well, joining us on the line right now is Cub Swanson, who fought February 16, 2013 at UFC on Fuel TV, Burrell versus McDonald, and won by unanimous decision against Dustin Poirier. Man, you've been on some kind of a tear lately. Cub, what's going on, man? How you feeling? I feel good, bud. Just, uh, you know, enjoying the ride. Uh, can't complain these days. Yeah, you know, Billy just brought up the tear uh, that you're on. A 3-0 and last year, 2012, two knockout of the Knights. You started off 2013 the right way. What's been that impetus, I mean, that driving force that's created this recent surge of domination in you? Because we've known you've always had the talent. You know, what's been different as of late? Um, just the confidence and uh, maturity uh, and uh, really just everything coming together. Uh, for so long, I was trying to change my game and improve. And when you make, like, huge uh, changes in your game, uh, not everything goes smooth. And, and um, so it's a lot of trial and error. And, you know, I'd have an opportunity and, and do, do a, like, a, I have a good performance. And then after that, I'd have a setback. And then, you know, all my progress was, like, you know, would get a rut. And it and be very hard to have a flow. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And uh, now I'm just... Everything just smooth, you know. Now, yeah, definitely, uh, congrats on all this success, bro. Um, looks like hard work's paying off for you, man. You're looking good lately. Thank you. Yeah. Now, for your fight with Poirier, you know, uh, in an interview, you had said that you trained in a few different places. I know you did strength conditioning, Palm Springs, then you're down in Albuquerque. I think you said you went to Chicago. Is that something that you do a lot? Yeah, I like to go back and forth. Uh, the Chicago thing was new for me. But uh, I knew that everyone was going to be, you know, trying to take me down. So um, I went out there to, to Chicago and wrestled uh, at Montini High School with uh, the Jackson's wrestling coach, Izzy. And uh, he has, like, one of the top high school teams in the nation. And uh, I it was wrestling high school kids and getting beat up. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, I... I couldn't relate more to that. My very first day that I walked into Constri- Extreme Couture, Jay, I was doing wrestling with uh, Brian H- uh, Keck. Yeah, no neck, yeah, yeah. all right? And No neck Keck. He puts me in there with this 16-year-old kid, man. I'm 36. Yeah. And I just looked at him, and I'm like, this is, he's not even a, he's a boy. <laughs> this isn't fair. Well, I found out a couple of slams and broken ribs later that he was the <laughs> for, like Nevada State wrestling champion. All right, so I know exactly how it feels to get in there and get manhandled. <laughs> yeah, those are the times you definitely don't want to underestimate people. Yeah, now, um, recently Frankie Edgar said that he'd be really interested in fighting uh, you. How does that sound to you? I mean, Frankie's an awesome fighter, and, and that's a very interesting fight to me. Um, but, you know, like I said before, I'm not in high school, and I'm not going to fight anybody who calls me out, <laughs> you know? Um uh, I work very hard to get to where I'm at, and I'm going to take whoever the UFC feels is uh, the next best step for me. If it's Frankie, cool. If it's not, then whatever. Did you get to see his fight with Aldo? Yeah, I did. What would you think? Uh, I, I was impressed. You know, you know I think uh, you know, he comes on strong towards the end, and I mean that, I feel like that's why he specifically asked for five rounds against me, uh, which I think is silly to specifically ask for a five round fight unless it's a title fight. Yeah, that's, that's I think it would be I think it definitely would be a, an interesting fight. Um one of the new things the UFC is doing, I mean we just had uh Johnny Hendricks on and we were talking about uh fighter rankings. Um you're you're ranked in the top ten, I think it was number five or six. Uh what are your thoughts on the ranking system? Uh I think it's a good idea, you know, but of course I'm always gonna think I'm higher than I am, but you know, I'll go out there and prove everybody wrong. Um, you know, I was upset at first. I didn't think Dennis Eber deserved to be ahead of me, and they just moved me past him. And I didn't think the Korean Zombie deserved to be ahead of me. Um, but uh, obviously the three guys that I did be ahead of me will all have wins over me, you know, Lamas, uh, Mendez, and Aldo. Um, so, 
but yeah, the, the two guys, those are the issues that I had. But you bring up Dennis Seaver. Uh, that's who you were originally uh, set to fight before he got injured. Is that a fight you'd be interested in, in, in them putting together again? Um, Kind of. But, I mean, I feel like he needs to go win a fight, you know? Uh, I feel like there's guys who are more deserving right now. Mm. Um, I, 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 think, uh, I think that would be a great fight because Seaver was uh, such a small lightweight and has looked really good at, at, at Feather and the two of you together. I think it would be a great scrap. So, Cub, let me ask you a question. You're in the gym right now training? Uh, no, this, this week is uh, my cookie break. Um, <laughs> trying to eat as many cookies as I can and get back in the gym next week. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. because I heard a rumor that you were in the gym mm-hmm. right now, and I'm like, wait a minute, this guy just won. Can he give himself one week <laughs> off? <laughs> yeah, eat as many cookies uh, as you want, man. You deserve it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cookie monster, too. <laughs> Go eat some cookies and some pizza, bro, and yeah. have a glass yeah, of wine. Yeah, I mean, that, me. that's some, what I ate after, other uh, after the fight you know with I mean? uh, Papa John's in England. I was like, Papa John's, all right, cool, let's do it. <laughs> so, so that's like your, you know, because we've talked to guys before, and, you know, <laughs> some guys have a fur. Uh, a f- favorite thing that they need to eat as soon as they're, they're able to weigh-ins are done they get that hard part out you know they need to to just indulge and a lot of them you know, pizza is it for you uh after the fight i don't indulge until after the fight um after weigh-ins i eat clean um and, and i do it you know the right way and i put on about 22 pounds after weigh-ins but like i, I mean like grilled chicken grilled vegetables uh you know, whole wheat pasta, no sauce. He so. does it the right way, yeah. That's the right way I to do, do it. it. Right. Yeah. I I knew, if you ever watch, it's kind of like the way the bodybuilders do it. After an event, they go out and they just eat anything. I mean, they're just shoving carbs and anything they can get into their mouths. Basically, yeah, feed those been, muscles. Yeah, because <laughs> they've been they've been so starved for so long. But, um, but Cub, listen, go back, enjoy yourself. And like I said, when a fight announcement happens, we want to have you right back here inside the MMA Fight Corner, and we can talk about your upcoming fight. All the best. Congratulations on your win, and we'll talk to you yeah. soon, buddy. God bless. Congrats. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. That's <laughs> yeah, dude, I, you know, we were talking about yeah, it before. I, uh, when, they, when somebody said he was in the gym, I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah, I was dude, like, come on. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell <laughs> you, he's, he's really, like, he's really been on a tear lately. He really is. Uh, his boxing's always been sharp, you know, one, the one thing that he's always, if you look at every single one of Cub's fights, the one thing that was always a problem was he was always getting put on his back. Mm-hmm. It, it was the wrestling. And I like to see that he's, you know, he's, he's stepping up that game. And, yeah. and this is a sport what, uh, where that has to happen. Definitely what impressed me to about him, he said, you know, what he said was he changed his, uh, his mind frame, which he was always trying to improve different things. And he just had to go back to being himself, which is great when, uh, when you understand that about your game and, and, you know, the next step you got to take in your career, that's when stuff starts coming together. And, and I'm, you know, I'm happy for him. He uh, figured that out. Absolutely. Now, okay, but let's let's break down a little bit about UFC 157 happening tomorrow night before we get into our breaking news in a little bit. Let's start with this fight real quick and just go down. Let's start with the main card. Rousey versus Carmooch. What are your Dude, thoughts, I, guys? I, listen, un- until I see differently, I, I can't say anything different is going to happen. First round armbar submission. I would not be surprised. Yeah. But let's be honest, we haven't seen Ronda put in a bad position. All right. Liz does have the capability of doing it, putting her on her back. But is that a spot you want to be? Do you want to be know, in Ronda's guard this in is any a way? Sport where anything happens, you get hit behind the head. And, you know, King Mo could, last could, night, man. Yeah. You know, you get, uh, you know, the equilibrium. Jay Haran last fight. So, I mean, you know, anything could happen. But, again, I, I think uh, Rousey's too strong for uh, Liz, you know, her judo game. And, you know, I think she puts her down with a judo takedown and, and goes for the arm. Just out, of, just out of curiosity, you two gentlemen sitting here right now, and, and everybody else for that matter, Rousey loses this fight. What do you think? Biggest, one of the biggest upsets in UFC history or what? Uh, I don't know. You can't. I don't think you could say the biggest upset in UFC history. Uh, I, well, I still think expe- I still think Matt Sarah holds that over oh, GSP. Well that, yeah, yeah, that did, but that I, I'd ha- I'd really have to say it one, would one of. it might it might throw a wrench into the plans of you know the UFC and the women's division. Listen, we've already heard Dana White talking about you know well, well Ronda will defend her belt a few times. You know here they're expecting her to win. 
Everybody expects Ron expects this to happen tomorrow night. Yeah, they don't need another Alistair Overeem situation that comes in and. But that's what Jay said. Anything can happen yeah, on true. any given night. We are wear four ounce gloves, and you know stuff happens, and you know whatever's going to happen on the night is going to happen. We were walking in the studio earlier, and Heidi just turned and said, "What happens?" <laughs> if Liz head kicks Rhonda <laughs> and she drops like a tree, and it, I'll know, have to it talk, could I'll, happen. I'll have Possible. to talk to Liz about messing up her face. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, Liz will have to do some talking and, with and me. You got to sure. watch because Liz is definitely talking the way she's supposed to right now, which is there's no pressure on me. I'm going in and I'm going to have fun. When that's a dangerous person, that's a dangerous fighter. Yeah, yeah you, you look know, at when she, all this hype is going on and and she's. Taking it as hey, whatever. I'm going in. I'm gonna just go for broke. That is a dangerous person. That's you, a dangerous fighter. Yeah. When you when you see on the countdown special, when you see Ronda driving around L. A. whipping around in a Beamer, and then you see Liz in her dented up Toyota. You know <laughs> she's uh, nothing. You know it's just it's yeah, only up hungry. from here for her. So. Right. And absolutely right. But let's take nothing away from Ronda. It's not like it was like that for her see, the what, whole time. Jay, what did I tell you? It's bordering on stalking fan. Oh, would you <laughs> right? stop? There we go. Would you stop? <laughs> hey, I developed the relationship. <laughs> Yeah, with Ronda, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm allowed to say that. Now, next fight, co-main event. A lot of people thought this should have been, I mean, you know, with, with with a little bit of the controversy here, this could have been main event status. Leota Machida going up against Dan Henderson. What do you think yeah, of this fight, man? Dude, Ooh. this this could very well have been the main Dan event. Dan is my should... man. He has the right hand from hell. I'm he he does. Man. Listen, Dan Henderson, okay. He... I'm an I'm a old guy. I like the Yeah, old but look timers. at when he fought it. Look at we, we, we thought that about Ryan Bader, and look what happened when he <laughs> faced right. a, a, a strong, strong-handed wrestler last summer. All right, listen. Talk about talk about Machida. All right, Machida's coming off that KO win of Bader. The corrected right? man. But l- let's be honest. When he first came into the UFC, people did sa- said that he was boring. And Who's that, that? Leoto Machida. Oh. They used to say he was boring. Well, if yeah, you look no, at his, they say everybody's boring. If you, but if you look, he, <laughs> he, his last four, four of his last five wins have come by knockout and all in devastating fashion. Okay, Dan Henderson, he hits you, you're going down. Problem is, he's got to hit you. Leoto is very evasive. He's very hard to take down. This is the hardest fight on this card to pick, I think. Okay, because you want to go with Dan Henderson, and if he connects, you know that Leoto's going out. He's had his lights turned out before. It could happen again. But I just think he's too hard to hit. That's, that's my issue. I'm leaning towards Leoto picking up this win. Wow. I am. Uh, I think, again, I think Kendo, you know, he's a lot of experience. His wrestling, he could take the fight. He could keep it up or down, and, um, you know, he throws them big bombs. Yeah, again, Leoto is a guy. He, he, you know, he's great at knowing his distance and range, which helps fighting a guy like Dan, a wrestler. So, you know, Dan could get caught coming in. Um, uh, I think the outcome to me is uh, Hendo, though. You know, the big uh, right hands and the wrestling. You and know, Ma- th- Machida has the best takedown defense in all of light heavyweight history. Uh, yeah. I mean, he he's very hard to take down, and mm. I know it doesn't happen often. I mean, he's never been knocked out, but Dan Henderson has been submitted three times in his career, mm. and if you look at those three submissions, they're all from Noguera black belts. Yeah, look where I Machida mean. trains. That's I'm just saying. Just look it up, folks. <laughs> now, also on this fight card as well, Faber Menjivar, Faber possibly facing being cut by the UFC. He doesn't get through this fight. What do you think, man? Uh, listen, Uriah Faber has never ever in his career lost two fights in a row. It's never happened. He's coming off the loss to Barrow. Um, this is a rematch with Menjavar when Menjavar had been a veteran as then, and it was Uriah's like third or fourth fight. Okay, maybe maybe a little more, but he was it was early in Uriah's career. Not only that, every fight he went he after he loses, he comes back with a submission win. I don't be surprised if he submits Menjavar tomorrow. What do you think, Jay? Uh, I think Uriah. I think uh, you know he has a great, um, well-rounded game takedowns his striking you know got better um i think I, I like watching him fight he's a he's a fun fighter to go out there you know before before the fight he's having fun he has fun in the fight he has fun after he has fun with life you know he's like a hippie you know you talk to that kid it's it's like you know it's uh it's all positive so um the you california know, kid i don't take nothing was... away from ivan but i think uh you know i think uh it's in california where where um you know, Uriah's from, and he has the hometown advantage, and he's going to have fun out there this weekend. By the way, for all of our picks, you can go to MMAFightCorner.com. Also, McGee, Near, and Koscheck versus Robbie Lawler. I got to tell you something, man. This is, dude, this is Josh Koscheck's 22nd fight in the UFC. 22nd fight. He's like fifth all time with the most fights inside the octagon. 
The last time Robbie Lawler fought in the octagon was before Koscheck was on the Ultimate Fighter. We haven't seen Robbie Lawler inside the UFC since UFC 50. Yeah, I All like right. I like Josh in this fight. I, I, you know, I I I've, Robbie Lawler is an exciting fighter, very exciting. I think 17 of his 19 wins are by knockout, and if he's gonna win, you know, yeah. he's got to let his ha- put his hands on on Koscheck, and Koscheck's tough to knock out. Yeah, he has a good chin. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, Koscheck is probably a little more well rounded. You know, he has that great wrestling background, and um, he hits hard too. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you never could cut out, um, count out a gunslinger though, like Robbie, and he's a southpaw. Yeah, you know people. Will, you know you got to understand like that's Rocky a whole Balboa. Yeah, that's a different. Um, <laughs> you're fighting a guy with power, and he's a southpaw, and he knows how to box. It's a little harder to fight a guy like that. You know, it's awkward. You can't just run in on a on a southpaw. Or, you know, that's how you get caught with a uh, with something. Yeah. And also, real quick, on the prelims, Mike Chiesa, this is his first fight coming in since winning the Ultimate Fighter back in June, and he's going to be fighting Calvin. And what do you think? Real you know, quick, real I, quick, because we got to get to this break. We gotta I, I have to news. be honest. I, you know, I like Chiesa's story. I like everything that happened for him. It was a wonderful ride on the Ultimate Fighter. But I, I think Anton's a little bit more experienced. I think he gets the win. All right. And now, real quick, Heidi's going to step up to the microphone and give us Heidi's hit list of breaking news, which we've been so patiently waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, there's just a couple more cuts that already happened today. Diego Nunez uh, and Milton Vieira. Sorry, Diego Nunez. Nunez. Yes, Nunez. they've both been cut. Uh, Milton Vieira's last record here was one loss, one, deci- uh, one draw. So. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you're winning or losing. Yeah. Uh, also added to UFC 158 on only what, a couple weeks out here. It's March 16th. Uh, George Roop versus Ruben Duran. That's, oh, that's an interesting fight. Uh, mm. I, I, I like George Roop. He's fun to watch. For sure, but I don't know. That, that chin. Yeah, it was, it's know. questionable. It <laughs> and, Dur- and Duran hits hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> And then also UFC 160 that's being projected for here in Vegas. Yes. MGM, uh, May 25th. Abel Trujillo and Khabib Nurmagomedov. So it's two lightweights there. We have uh, Khabib ranked at number 10. Another big lightweight fight, number three ranked, Gray Maynard against TJ Grant. I love oh, that's a good fight. I love, that's a good fight. Love that Team fight. Team Bully right here. Yeah. I, I love that fight. And and My Grant man. Grant's a monster, an yeah. absolute beast. You saw what he just did to Matt Wyman. Gray, gets, just, Gray just had a baby, though. He needs the money. <laughs> <laughs> he needs that extra money. He got money, but he needs some more, more money in the bank. And the Abel fight. A- Abel and uh, who did who'd you say Abel was fighting? Khabib Nurmagomedov. Oh, undefeated 19 0 on a fight at, win streak Khabib in the UFC. Khabib Nurmagomedov. At, out of uh, AKA. <laughs> Just put yeah. a whipping on um, Tiago Tavares, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll tell you though, Abel, the only guy this year, actually, or maybe in the last four months, to get a win that fights out of the Black Zillion, Except besides for Vitor. B- besides yeah. Vitor, the uh, only other does. guy. I mean, people it, put so much. Uh, I, you just gotta wonder camps, though, how, how uh, they put it on my camp, you know, Extreme Guitar, or, or you know, they always pick on Jacksons or or any camp, you know. I just think you know they're just going through a little. You know, so you don't think that brings da- down morale in the camp at all? A little all? bit, but, you know, we're fighters. You know, you get past it. You know, a couple guys start winning, it's back to normal. And that's the way it is. You heard it from the horse's mouth himself. Uh, hey, Jay, Jay knows exactly, sure. knows all about <laughs> the thoroughbred. <laughs> the thoroughbred <laughs> Jay Haran, the horse's mouth. And make sure to watch UFC tomorrow, dude. History, History in, the, in making. the making. History in the making, people. Going to be great. Not forget about the card we'll get to next week happening in Japan. That's more history right there. Ah. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank our guests, Cub Swanson, of course, for coming on. Johnny Hendricks, our boy right here, Jay Haran. Give me five, Jay. Yeah. He's the man. All right. And of he course. Meant dollars. <laughs> yeah, it was a couple oh, bucks in my go. hands. And of course, you, the I fight fans. You guys are paying me on here. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you, the fight fans, join us right back here next Tuesday, 6 p.m. inside the MMA Fight Corner. Till then, go to MMAFightCorner.com, MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio, 920.